are joined by Rick Grinnell for, hey, the last time of the year, Rick. Happy New Year. And uh, this tweet came out from you uh, just a little bit ago uh, yesterday, yesterday evening, and I wanted to get your thoughts on it, and maybe you can break it down for our audience. You said, a career foreign service officer at the State Department tells me that the U.S. policy on Russia and Ukraine is to not have any distance from the Europeans. Whatever the Europeans want is the Biden policy. This is scary. They control him, and Putin knows it. I think a lot of people read that, Rick. They get concerned uh, because you, you hear a lot of words, buzzwords, sort of boogeyman words. You don't want to be uh, you know, freaking everyone out. But this is a real uh, topic of concern when it comes to the way we will be treating the situation, which maybe people don't even know about, that's really going on currently with Russia and Ukraine. Well, it's a concern because it's now official U.S. policy. And what, what that means is, is that the State Department has instructed through cable a, uh, a, a, a mandate that all embassies in Europe uh, have as their U.S. policy, communicate to the countries where they are in, that our U.S. policy is to do whatever the Europeans want so that we all stay united. Now, look, the, the, the reality is, is that there is power in being united with the Europeans so that we have one voice. There's no question about that. But that shouldn't be the goal. The United States and Europe have fundamentally different threat assessments about Iran, about uh, Putin. I mean, look no further than the Germans who are uh, clamoring and wanting to have this Nord Stream 2 pipeline from Russia. They don't fear a retaliation from Russia. They don't fear the influence of Russia through that pipeline through having too much energy coming from one country like Russia. We, the United States, have a fundamentally different viewpoint when it comes to Russia. If Germany really feared Russia, like sometimes they say they do, they would be paying their NATO bill because NATO exists to make sure that Russia doesn't go into Central Europe and and the rest of Europe. But the Germans who have a surplus are not paying their their NATO bill, it's because they don't share the same threat assessment. They're, they don't fear Russia like the rest of us do. And by the way, the same is with Iran. Um, the Europeans feel like if the Iranians are going to attack, they're not going to attack Europe. And so they want to trade with Iran. So the idea that, that we have different priorities, different criteria for our threat assessment is a very real foreign policy issue. And so, therefore, when Joe Biden says, stay close to the Europeans and do whatever the Europeans want as our U.S. policy when it comes to Ukraine, that's a disaster for the American people. It's not an America first doctrine. It's a Europe first. And and by the way, I'll just finish with this, is that no European leader is surprised by this because they, for 40 years, has have watched Joe Biden as a senator, as the vice president of the United States. They know that his Achilles heel, the thing that he values, the thing that he wants from the Europeans is applause and awards. He wants to be liked by the Europeans. And so, therefore, when they say something, they scare him into thinking, well, I don't want to be a pariah. I don't want bad press in Europe. And so I'm going to do what the Europeans want, which is why, as Chancellor Merkel was, was walking out the door, She went to Joe Biden and said, can you just stop uh, punishing us for Nord Stream 2? Can you allow us to have this gas pipeline? Joe Biden said yes. He said, "Okay, Chancellor Merkel, so that you'll like me, so that as you're leaving, we can be better friends and good friends. And you think that I'm a good partner. I will do that. So to to be honest, it's a personal selfish move by Joe Biden. Well, and we know today that at uh, Putin's request that President Biden will be speaking with him by phone, and this is just one day before the end of the year, and there's also supposed to be bilateral uh, Russia-U.S. talks the first week of January. But uh, it's being reported that U.S. officials are saying that President Biden will tell Putin a pathway exists to avoid conflict. I think Vladimir Putin has been pretty clear what that pathway he believes is, uh, does after the disaster we saw back in December between the two leaders, uh, do you have much hope for this phone call that a, a pathway will exist to avoid conflict? 
No, you know what Putin hears when Joe Biden says there's a pathway that exists to avoid a conflict? What Putin hears is blah, blah, blah. And he remembers Crimea. And he remembers all those threats from Barack Obama and Joe Biden as vice president that, that you know, really bad things would happen. Uh, you'd have really bad sanctions and, and the finger wagging and, and all of that. The, the, the idea that Putin is afraid of Joe Biden or thinks that Joe Biden has a credible threat of military action, he's already taken military action off the table. And of course, no one wants military action. Uh, but the beauty of, of Donald Trump was that leaders would constantly tell me, and they would say this in a very concerning way. They would, you know, Chancellor Merkel or other leaders in Europe would say to me, we just don't know what Donald Trump might do. And I would smile and I would think inside my head, that is exactly where we want to be. <laughs> right. We want them to, to be nervous about what, what Donald Trump is going to do. And we want to make sure that they don't know what Donald Trump or the president of the United States is going to do. Unfortunately, they know exactly what Joe Biden is going to do, which is come down on the European side because he's instructed our embassies that our policy is to stay close to the Europeans. The Europeans love it. They're now in the driver's seat. Putin loves it because he can control Europe. Right. I mean, look, you look at something like the Abraham Accords, you think that would have happened under someone other than a President Trump, someone who genuinely could could maybe concern them enough to go, yeah, we need to get our stuff together. Finally, that happened, at least to partially. Go ahead. I want to add one point to that, Jordan, because it's such a good point. I can tell you unequivocally that it, the Abraham Accords would not have happened under Joe Biden for one reason alone. Chancellor Merkel was against it, and she voiced her concern. And she, she voiced her concern to, uh, to Jared Kushner and to me and to Donald Trump. And we listened and we pushed back and we continued with the policy. But the reality is, is if we would have been maximizing a, an applause uh, or, or good news sure. or, or a welcoming atmosphere from the Europeans, we never would have done it. Yeah, absolutely. Rick, we only have a minute left. I appreciate you uh, joining us for this whole year. It's really been excellent to have your opinions, your advice, and your thoughts. And thank you for supporting the work and for, for telling people to go support the work of the ACLJ.